Well, we're setting up for a custom built route in Scenario Planner. First, we go into our route into Timetable, choose On Foot, set it to whatever weather conditions you want. In my case, uh, dynamic weather is fine, but I want it to be misty. Starting out with a misty uh, atmosphere. Uh, running our. We don't want to hit play now. We want to go start going back. We set our weather. Go back, go back again till you get Creators Club and then Scenario Planner. Pick the scenario that you custom built and then go ahead and hit play. Welcome. This is Gene Harm and welcome to my milk run. This is going to be a little different activity than what you're accustomed to in train operations. Let's go, go ahead and get on board. get this thing started let's close the doors it could be a little chilly out this morning in a November morning we can open the windows though and always adjust those as needed and let's go ahead and turn on our our engine and fuel pump and generator switch and all that stuff And you notice I don't have a HUD up. We do all this with the mouse. Get the gauge lights on. You know, probably should have turned this cab light on from, to begin with. It would have been easier to see this stuff. <coughs> well, we want to get our ear pressure going through our airline so we're gonna set that to freight for the brake pipe and the whole train all the cars and then now on a locomotive brake we want to set that to the lead locomotive and as always we get the locomotive brake into full application then we can release how to keep the train still won't roll we can release the train brake or the automatic brake and let the air flow down all through the uh, brake pipe and the red needle goes up to 90 psi that's our brake pipe needle and you can see the center gauge there it's got one needle white needle it shows that the, the brake calibers do have a bit of pressure on them keeping the train still Keeping the train right where it is. Now, if you see this PCS get triggered, you can certainly reset it by resetting the airline here. Redo the freight. Turn it off and back on again, and you see it resets the PCS, and then your train is back to be operational. Hit the, we only got one locomotive, so we do the one selector. And then go ahead and put it in forward. Give it a notch of throttle. And we get our tractor motor, traction, I'm excuse me, traction motors going. And get a little pull on this. And once we see that, give it another notch, and then we're about ready to go. And then we can release the locomotive brake take a look out and see if we're moving if we're not we if we see that wheel slip indicator come on I don't see it right now I don't see any wheel slip there we go we're couple toots and we're on our way didn't have any wheel slip this morning wasn't any rain on the track or snow we're ready to go here's a local task I drew up for my custom route we want to stop at Myers deal at 545 somewhere around there 
have a 15 minute time there and leave at 6. That'll be our first stop. We'll come back and look at our task again as we go through. As I said, this is going to be a little different. One of the frustrations I've had for ever since Train Sim World came out was uh, they're not so big on local deliveries. They pretty much make routes to go from yard to yard, end to end. And then if you want to go ahead and spot cars at local industries, uh, they don't really have much uh, in their route planner to do such things. And even when they have local industries, you don't have the free roam ability to do it too often. So, um, this is one of those routes, the, one, the first one that came out, Sand Patch Grade. I'm running the old Clinchfield old timer cars on Sand Patch Grade just for fun to show you how we can do local deliveries without having to go off on a, a, a spur or you know, a local delivery siding or something of that sort. One of the fun things about the old time cars is they have the old time caboose. So what I want to do with this sand patch grade route where there's no sidings to drop off cars and pick up cars for the most part. We will do a little bit of that. But uh, they are, there are freight stations and post office along the way. We're going we're gonna to stop at the stations and make a delivery like the old time milk runs doing a, doing a drop off in real time um, by unloading the cars and uh, moving on to the next station. So this certainly is an old-fashioned type of run. I'll take some photos along the way. And as with any milk run, it's done very early in the morning. This whole run uh, throughout Sand Patch Grade route, it takes a couple hours to do. But just to give you the idea of what's going on here and how I'm doing my operations a little differently uh, by stopping at these stations and taking time off when we're there to unload the packages. You know, I, I, uh, I'm going to edit through a lot of the mileage so we can get this whole, do whole thing done in half the time as far as the video uh, is concerned. By cutting through uh, a lot of this. Now here's looking at the task again. My first stop is when we're 19 miles out from the, the destination yard. And that would be around Myersdale. And looking at the clock now, it's 5:38, and we got another 20 minutes to go. <laughs> so of course, uh, I'm going to cut a lot of that 20 minutes out of the video. When I first came up with the idea of dropping off goods the old-fashioned way by actually stopping the train and not dropping a car but just opening the train up and dropping the goods, I wasn't sure how enjoyable it would be but turns out uh, I uh, very much did enjoy doing it this way. I've done it several times now.
And the one thing about Sandpatch Grade is it has these local uh, freight depots all around the route to do this kind of thing. Not all the routes have freight depots like this, but this one does, there's many of them. You can see a depot here, but there's no access to this one from the rail. Not sure what that one's being used for. As we work our way through town here. first stop. This is our depot. The thing about this one, when we stop at this depot, the train's going to be blocking the road. So we have an understanding with the locals that they know we come do deliveries between 545 and 6, that that road's going to be blocked. But we have to be out of here by 6. We're going to do our best to do that. Go ahead and set our brakes. Put it in neutral. Turn off the field generator. And we got our three point protection. It is five forty eight, a few minutes a few minutes late, but that's no problem. Okay, then we gotta get up and get out. and open up these cars. Unfortunately, in Train Sim World, uh, we don't get any loads inside the box cars. There are visible loads. <clears throat> and of course, we said this was a milk run, so we want to open up a refrigerator car for those perishable things like vegetables and other type of uh, eggs and milk and that kind of thing. Cheese. All right, so those two front box cars will get unloaded. And 
and uh, we have to make our way to the back of the train. There's not a lot of cars on these uh, local delivery trains, so it's a little bit of walking, but it's not terribly bad. There's a good boost back here somewhere. There we go. We see it now. Now what we have, back in our caboose, we have a locked closet where we keep our post. We've got to open that up and uh, grab our bag of post for this stop and haul it back up to the uh, depot. Now I'm using the old time cars. It's the only route I know Clinchfield is the only route I know that has these old time cars. Um, but the Clinchfield route is a mining route and doesn't have depots like this that you can stop at. Not that I recall. I should probably double check on that. But this route is fabulous for this kind of a, you know, get out, open up the box cars, have a caboose. They got these depots and there's a post office. And you can make the old type, old fashioned type delivery. So we come around back here. Some of our crates are being unloaded. And do our old time uh, post delivery at that door. This is a good time for you guys to hang out. Take a, a real time break. And uh, just go ahead and let it sit for 10, 15 minutes, whatever. Lock it up. <clears throat> Sometimes it takes a couple slides. There we go. box car we can leave that one open if you don't mind up to you and then we get on our way here get the air brake back up the brake pipe up to 90. Just give it a little throttle. Whoop, we gotta turn our generator field switch back on. Put it forward, then we can give it a little throttle. See the traction motor, see the amps on that meter showing us that we got a good uh, I'll release it and hit the horn, let's go. One of the other frustrations I have with Train Sim World is you get the variety of cars depends on what route you you, you know downloaded. You're not able to get a mixed you know like mixed freight cars by downloading individual uh, packs. Hopefully that will change in the future. I know in the Designers Club. Uh, people are making such things and uh, but it's it's difficult to design in the scenario planner and get all the different cars to be mixed and matched in one train and that's what you normally would see in real life you know but we always seem to get uh, only well only see in the scenario planner uh, 
uh, certainly in the scenarios that come with the routes. You know, the scenarios that come with the routes, they they got their certain type of car. You know, and like you can get all of the CSX cars for the for this particular route. And of course now I got these cars on only because I chose the clinch field in my scenario plan, custom built plan. Yeah, and there's no way to, uh, in the scenario planner, to go ahead and build yourself a consist that uses different cars, different, different route names. One thing I like about the Sand Pass grade, it is another country type route, you know, it's not a city type, and, as we have a plenty of those too that we enjoy, but more of a country, eastern mountain, and all the delight that you have with those, as far as scenery goes. We're up to 11 past 6. We're going to work our way down to our next Yeah, as you probably notice, I, I try not to use the HUD too often. You can run these trains using its own gauges fairly well. And uh, unfortunately, I gotta pull up the HUD to see what time it is. This tunnel uh, still is dark, even though it's Train Sim World 3 and they've kind of corrected this problem in the new Train Sim World 3 routes. Uh, it has not been corrected for this uh, this older route that came with Train Sim World, the very first one. I'm going to set the brakes. I happen to know once I get through this tunnel, it starts heading down the mountain. sounds it just sounds the same now that horn sound like it was in the tunnel isn't that strange the first couple toots I didn't notice any echo those last toots did you hear it there was certainly a, a tunnel echo I like it Sun's trying to burn through the the mist. Here's our post office. That's our second stop.
get everything uh, I think I still got some <laughs> Six twenty. We still got some more stuff on this refrigerator that can get unloaded for the post office. A uh, little freight building here. Open up this third car and get some guys out here to unload it. And once again, work our way back. You know, you get some walking done in these, uh, on these milk runs. Good excuse to get out there and stretch your legs. So I think you guys are getting the idea now of how this is going to work. You know, uh, we don't have the opportunity to do local deliveries as far as dropping cars off at industry, but we certainly can uh, do this milk run type of thing where we stop at the, the depots, the freight depots, the post offices. Let's get our post out of this locker, grab the bag, and take it on back. What have you back here? The mountains off in the distance, all misty. Smoky Mountains. He said, that's what they call them down in Tennessee, North Carolina. This is just a little further north. Yep, have a sack of post over my shoulder and walk it back up, hoof it back over to the post office. You know, this adds a little bit more gameplay to it, you know. Um... I don't know why I thought of it, but I did and had never seen anybody else do this. But, it, you know, it takes advantage of the fact that these cars are, you know, have working, operating sliding doors. And, of course, we don't have any working doors on this depot, but snap some uh, pictures while we're here. Now, if you're wondering, I did build in uh, the um, scenario designer, not the scenario designer, in the, uh, oh, I don't, I can't remember what you call it, <laughs> but I, I designed some of my own paint schemes for these uh, box cars, for these old time cars, and uh, particularly for CSX, and uh, I, I can use those. Um, but for the sake of you guys to see uh, how this can be done if if you already have Clinchfield um, as a route and you have Train Sim World 3 you can use the you can use the route planner uh, to do the same thing here without any additional downloads or anything like that But you certainly can go to the designers club and look to see what other kind of old time cars have been designed and use those for the same type of thing. Take a seat here. In fact, the first time I ran this, I ran it with my own designed uh, CSX cars. It says 627. We can get out of here on time.
as always make sure local bra locomotive brake is on full before you release the train brake and we don't even we're on a downhill slope a couple toots and we're on our way funny run on a downhill slope I didn't even have to give it any forward traction see you later guys Look at that. So I made sure when I did my scenario planning that I had a couple services driving by me as I was doing my local deliveries. And uh, in this case, I had the old time CSX uh, paint scheme. I can't remember if that came, that didn't come with the route. And I don't remember buying it, but anyway, I must have upgraded to it at some point. You know, for a long time I hadn't played the this route. And this route was the first one that came out with the entrain symbols of the original package and it was the only thing they had and I had some frustrations that you know you couldn't get any free roam outside of the yards and you know they called it the sandbox and it's like well there's only so much you want to shuffle around it within the yard. And uh but this, this whole concept of doing the milk run has kind of revitalized the, this route for me because I just hadn't been playing it for the past year or two. And it's nice to kind of take advantage. And I always liked the scenery. It just didn't, it didn't like the operations. But this, this makes it operational. Now, as you can see here, off to the right, there's a little siding I can drop some cars off. And this is why we have some hopper cars in the back. So that's what we're going to do now. It caught up on me kind of quick. <laughs> I wasn't quite ready for it. I'm hoping to get this thing to a stop. Next thing on our task list. We can go ahead and get this thing stopped. See what our guys back in the caboose see if they can tell us how far we are. Unfortunately, you can see I uh, I overpassed the points. I didn't break soon enough, and we had to back it up a little bit. We'll drop off the caboose. It kind of adds to the operation in the old time cars where you have to deal with the caboose whenever you drop cars off. So I want to drop off a few of these hoppers. You see that red signpost to the right? As long as the, the caboose is beyond that, then we're safe uh, that we won't merge into each other when we uh, one track 
merges into the other, we won't hit it, hit the cars won't hit. It. I don't know why I had such a hard time expressing that, but I think you get the idea. So we're going to jump on the back of uh, the back of the train. <clears throat> Clear my throat there. That's what happens when you're out in a cool, misty morning. Anyway, I love riding the back of these trains. One of the wonders of Train Sim World 3 is I like that. I think it's phenomenal. And one of the times I like to uh, bring up the HUD and look at it as if it's my radio. My communications with, with the engineer. So, you know, even though I'm doing a milk run, I still have this one siding I can do some uh, switching with, you know, drop off in some cars. For whatever reason, they wanted us to leave a three of these hoppers back here. So this one is right at the post. If I left four cars, uh, it's a little close. I mean, another train could maybe whack it as the two tracks merge together. You see that? Although it uh, is right at that marker. I can back it up a few inches, uh, but I was only supposed to leave three, I think. So definitely looks like four of them would have been doable. You know, the thing is, you can play this any way you want. And climb up here and let's roll this thing out. You can see why this is a little bit more fun than just running the rail from one end to the other. And it takes a bit of time. Very time consuming to make these moves. Sure, that's unlocked. Six fifty. We've been out here an hour already. I think we started at 545, 550, if I remember. Ah, good job. And 
we don't want to forget to hit the handbrake here. This is one of these times I have to use the hood. <laughs> Sometimes the mouse just doesn't do it. I think the mouse would do it, but it takes a lot of finagling around before you hit the right spot. Alright, here we are. Let's get going again. So this time I'm I'm on a downhill slope, so setting the brakes on right away. So far we hit the Myersdale, the Man's Post Office, the Hyman Siding. We just got done dropping off cars. It is now 6:53, and we're supposed to be at the Hyman Shack at 7:10. A little shorter train this time. Wow, this tunnel is giving nice echo. Definitely could hear it going through that one. Seven o'clock, so another ten minutes or so before we get to our last stop. When I say last stop, the last, the last freight depot before we head on down to the yard. They're just thinking for fun, you can probably do the same same uh, route that I'm doing here with this engine with the with the Super Chief F7. Just set it up right in the scenario plan. Unfortunately with the scenario planner, if you want to mix and match engines and cars, you have to do it. You have to manually switch them. You can't do it in the planner itself. You can only match an engine to the cars that come with that engine when you uh, purchase a particular route. It's frustrating that the scenario planner is limited that way. Oh, here comes another train. You 
you notice that? I don't know if you noticed that. That second engine had the the old chassis system. <laughs> and it's got a, a, a little bit of a mix of my box cars in there, these pink ones. I was trying to have a faded paint car in it. And there's a couple green ones I designed. <laughs> That's fun. But I don't know how I got the engine with the chassis uh, system, uh, you know, with the cat label on it. That's pretty awesome. I really don't know how that got on yet. Maybe that came with the original uh, CSX uh, sand patch grade, because uh, I don't know. I didn't. I don't remember ever buying a pack like that. I love railroad bridges. I don't know what it is about them. One thing I gotta tell you, when you do these milk runs like this, you gotta know your route. This stuff comes up on you quick. You're not just going from one end to the other like a fish in a fish tank. Here's our shack. Eidman Shack. I call it a shack. <laughs> but that's our last drop. You see some crates there ready to be uh, going somewhere. So I hope you guys enjoyed this new way of uh, doing railroad operations with Train Sim World 3. Taking advantage of the scenario designer and scenario planner, I guess is what it's called. And putting some of these old freight cars on one of the mountain routes. Turn those brake, dynamic brake, turn that off. Put on the loco brake. And we can get up. There's those chessy cabooses. It's nice every uh, 20 minutes or so getting out and stretching the legs. I guess we're down to this last refrigerator car. Yeah, it's a shame that we don't have uh, loads, visible loads in Train Sim World that we can be looking at something inside these. Yeah, these are the last two. I haven't opened these up yet. It'd be fun too if you had a bill of lading you could stick on the side of the door. There's Bob's barricades. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Yeah, over there, see him? <laughs> it's 
Somebody made a lot of money coming up with the making. Bob made a lot of money, I think, with these barricades. All right, we'll pull our post out of this closet. I don't know if there was a such thing as uh, Bob's Barricades back in the 70s. Here's a hard hat. Should have claimed that one. Alright. Get our guy. Somebody's around here to load this stuff up. Yeah, one of the things I do if, when I do these milk runs like this is when I make these stops, it's a time I can get up and use the restroom and in real life get up and take a break and, you know, do a phone call or whatever it is you got to do. This is our last stop and then of course from here we go on to the yard, our final destination in Cumberland. And, uh, I don't think, well, we won't take another half hour to do that. We'll go ahead and finish up here and call it done. And these refrigerator cars, we, you got to close them back up again. Ah. Slide it a little harder this time. There we go. So I think you guys get the idea, a little different way of doing uh, railroad operations, do it the old-fashioned way, do an old-fashioned milk run, do it in the morning using old-fashioned cars, and uh, I can't wait till we get steam, American steam, that's got to be coming at some point. This was a fun ride. Thanks for coming along, and we'll catch you next time.